Roadblock of turkeys. Trying to get to work. All right, so we've got a slow soaking drizzle going on right now. But today's project is simply hauling road bond to the job site where we are putting the tiny house in and the rock crusher. I will show you in a minute where it's at in relation to my house. This is coming down from my house. We've gone about three quarters of a mile. And right through those trees is where the rock quarry is. So it's really convenient for me, even on rainy days, to be able to judge what I should do, especially as far as hauling road bond, since you pay for it by weight here. If you buy it soaking wet, you're paying for a lot of water weight and you're not getting as much material. I walked out of the house and I could hear the crusher running, which means to me that there is fresh road bond. Some people call it crusher run or crush and run coming right off the belt. So with this slow drizzle, even a fine mist at times, it's not gonna soak it that quickly. So we're just gonna run today and until it really starts raining hard, Trucks are going to be hauling the crush and run ABC out as fast as it's coming off the belt. So it's going to be continuously running, putting dry material out. So even though it's drizzling, we get to still work. I'm really loving this ram. This, I didn't know if I'd like it. The little, you just turn the knob. I thought that's just weird. But the more I use it, the more. I'm loving it. Super user-friendly truck. Some people hate Dodge, some people love them. I'm loving this one. I am loving it. My Ford L9000, 1985 model. And then our baby, baby boy. I learned not to park under that stupid tree. This is our Ford F750 for those who are getting new to the channel. <clears throat> this truck and me have a love-hate relationship. I love the truck. Because it always starts easy. It's got plenty of power, but just not a lot of torque. That's what we're gonna be using to move our road bond today. We're just gonna take our time. There's no sense in pushing, pushing, pushing all the time because that, when you get yourself in that situation and your work rhythm is rush, 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 push, push, push all the time, and you have to push because you've made promises to customers that I will have your job started by this date. I will have it finished by this date. That's where stress and anxiety starts to build up. And when you're stressed and you're anxious, you can't focus on doing things right because you're worried about the things that are could and probably will go wrong because you're rushing through it. So make yourself slow down, take your time and enjoy the work. You started a business and you're working for yourself so you don't feel rushed and somebody's not breathing down your neck all the time. So don't become the boss to yourself that you hated in the past. That doesn't make sense. So do the work and enjoy it. Let's go ride around for a little while. All right, Orville has warmed up and so have I. I know you guys, most of you, are in this business and you know what you're doing, but the whole idea of starting this channel was for me to help people who are starting in a business or they are thinking about it. And I lost my sunglasses right in front of me. How about that? And your, your own attitude is your deciding factor of whether you're going to be successful or not. If you 
have a positive attitude and you go into it optimistically and with a plan, there's a good chance that you're gonna do well. The biggest thing that I have found for me that was a tough issue was to not let worrying about what can go wrong and the anxiety of failure cloud my mind. If you are so based on, is this gonna work? Am I gonna make money? Am I gonna be able to even get work? If you're worried about those things, how can you have any amount of thought process left to think about what you've got to do to get your name out there, to get the work, and in turn be successful? That's the biggest thing. So from the get-go, make a promise to yourself and commit to when you start having those thoughts and you start having thoughts about negative things and failure make yourself stop and concentrate you have to make the conscious effort to say okay what what do i need to do to be successful what do i need to do to get my name out there and all these things that are just it's very basic the human mind the average human mind can only think about three things at one time three things okay now for today with this process going on and this project we are number one i've got to focus on getting to the quarry and what material i have once that thought is had we're good then it's just a matter of thinking about the path i'm going to travel from the quarry to the job and back the other thing is, the big factor we were talking about earlier, the weather. The weather is constantly changing, so it's gonna be a constant factor that you're processing in your mind. At any time, the bottom could fall out, and it could be just pouring rain, and your mind's gonna to have to shift from, it's dry, everything is good, to, has this just ended my day? All these factors, and I'm sorry to bore you guys who are here to just watch machinery work you know that's not you know sorry <laughs> these are important things so three things the average person's mind can actively process and think about you need to commit to making those three things stuff that you can control anxiety comes from worrying about something that you cannot control i can't control the weather i can react to it and I can dictate what I do on different types of weather, but I cannot control, is it gonna rain? Is it gonna clear up? Is it gonna get sunny? Is it gonna get too dry? I can't control those things, so worrying about it takes up one of my three things that I can't control, so what's the point? A lot of people put that in their face you know, they just say, well, it's out of my control. I'm going with the flow. And a lot of the time, that's the best thing to do. Tell yourself and say it out loud. I can't control that. That is not in my control. You blow a hydraulic line, okay? So your day is shot. If you've got employees, you still got to pay them even though work is stopped. You can't control that that line blew. You absolutely cannot control that. You may have been able to do inspections and saw it coming and already had a line ready to replace it or replace it before. But in the moment when something goes wrong that you didn't foresee coming, don't think, oh God, it happened and dwell on it. As soon as something happens that you can't control and gives you that empty feeling in your stomach like, oh, this is gonna ruin my day. Okay, it happened, it's cost you your profit for the day. Now what have you gotta to do to get it fixed and move forward with life? That's where the difference between people who are like, this is too hard, I didn't see that coming, I can't control it, I quit. I give up, I can't make money like this. 
that's the difference in those people and people like you and me who are just going to see the thing happen we're going to react to it and life goes on you're going to have days where you make profit and there's going to be days when you have a loss it's the name of the game and most of the time it's not even in your control so you just got to keep going with it look at all them clouds now along with anxiety guys you know we're looking out the windshield right now and we're seeing drizzle you can think about that like okay it's not looking good it's dark skies it's drizzling everything's gonna get too wet we're gonna have to shut down you know what i see i see erosion when it's dark like this it's drizzling it's raining somewhere dirt is eroding and more than likely it's eroding in a very, very inconvenient spot for a human, a resident, a homeowner, a, plant, a property owner. So even when things are what some people see as bad, look at the good of it. If it never rained, I'd go broke. I wouldn't have any work. I'd have very little work anyway. Not all of my work is erosion, you know, that's true. But a good portion of it is erosion. Either repair, prevention, or control. So rain is a good thing. Don't always look at the negative. You've got to focus on how every situation can benefit you. That is extremely important. I'm gonna tell you something I can control is when junk gets caught up in my windshield wipers and streaks. I can't stand it. It drives me nuts. I'm gonna fix that. I can't stand streaking windshield wipers. You talk about driving me nuts. gamble the drizzle is getting a little bit heavier and we're really close to pulling into the quarry number one gamble is am i going to go in here and the road bomb be soaking wet if that's the case i'm just going to go onto the house but if it's not soaking wet the next gamble is you get loaded or you're going to get poured on going down to the job site that's one of those factors that we can't control so we're not even gonna worry about that. Me personally, I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna get loaded and I'm gonna roll with it. Turning into our favorite quarry, the Black Mountain Grovestone Quarry. Let's see here. You want me to come on back here and load it the belt? Come on back here in a minute. Sample. Look in the bed and make sure there ain't no raccoons or anything back here gonna get mushed. The bed's all clear, ain't no raccoons, bear cubs, anything like that. Now we just wait our turn. I like seeing that dry road bond coming right off the belt on a day like this. It's gonna make life a lot easier. Even if we get in a pour down with it coming right off the belt, we'll dump it out in a pile take the excavator and pack the edges to where water will just run off it and uh, try it on a drier day. But I think today's gonna be pretty good. I think we'll be able to make it through. Right now, eight or nine miles to be done. We're going today. You bought it. I'm gonna need about eight tons at the road bond. Yeah, just anywhere around eight. Eight, eight and a half. Sailed out right away. Shut it. 
I didn't want to get too heavy going down into this site because if it has rained a lot over there, that road's muddy and could cause us uh, problems getting out. Going in too heavy will tear the road up, and then when we're empty and light, we'll spin out coming up if it's muddy. Food for thought. All right, let's inspect our situation here. Nobody stole our trencher over the weekend. That's always a plus. That's one reason I called it off rent on Friday. That way, if something did happen, it wouldn't be our fault. So this is a good sign. I know it's rained since we were here pretty good. That bank looks good. I don't really see any signs of puddling here. So I think that's good. I'm going to move this excavator out of the way, back the truck down, and I'm just going to start dumping piles of road bond right in here. And we'll work it maybe tomorrow, I think. We'll see. Alrighty, I was wanting to just get material stock piled, but I've got to spread a load through here anyway. They want it to be uniform, and it only makes sense to go ahead and do it before it gets any wetter and we just start tracking this mud onto our good stuff. So this next load, I'm just going back in here and tailgate it out, I think is the wise thing to do at this point oh yeah we'll make it look good real good now remember something guys if uh it's been raining and it's damp Pressure run, ABC, road bond, all that stuff, same thing. It's got all these fines in it. And you can see that it, see how it holds its shape? Well, what happens is you're going down the road and you're bouncing and banging and this stuff gets compacted against that tailgate. So when it's wet, you've got to open your tailgate up, maybe one to two more links in the chain to make sure that it comes out. And when this stuff's bone dry, which this just came off the belt, but it's been drizzling all the way here, so the crust, the top part of it, that's gonna be a little bit worse than what's on the inside. So let's try, let's try 14 links and just see what happens. I've got shovels in case it does. Um, typically, I can set this as tight as 12 links and I start counting in the same spot every time and I count to the length that's actually latched into your chain hole. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That's right on the money. Do the same number of lengths on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirteen, fourteen. Okay. So 14 lengths, both sides. We do have some tree limbs over here to the left. They're small limbs, but just in case I'm leaving my tarp back. So the arms are pointing backwards. And as we go by those tree limbs, they're just gonna rake along the arms as opposed to having them pointing the other way and possibly hang an arm and bend it, which they're not super cheap. Nothing is, 
and especially if you're starting out in this business every dollar matters you, you can't afford just throw money away so we've got again 14 links on the chains i'm going to raise the bed up and you'll notice that i'll raise it up until i hear material start sliding to the back and then i'm going to raise it about that much more and then i'm going to floorboard this thing and i'm not going to let up until i'm out of gravel let's we'll see how it goes came out faster than I thought it was going to. And that's okay because thicker with road bond, crusher run, thicker is typically better. The thicker it is, the more compaction you can get into it. It is harder for water to soak into it once it's compacted. Also, when it's a little bit thicker, it's a lot easier to shape your road. Now let's check out what happened up here toward the top, shall we? So it's coming out really thick here. Now notice, that it tapers off up here, okay? With this particular truck, one issue I've been having, one issue I've been having, the way it's programmed and it's to protect the transmission that the PTO is hooked to. When you have the PTO engaged to control the bed, it'll only give you 1500 RPMs. If it was a manual, that'd be okay because we could put it in first gear and crawl along it'd be just fine it'd be like wilbur but wilbur has a lot more torque so that's a whole different story it's hard to see these changes in angle on the camera but what happened is from where we started out the truck was pointing uphill as we moved along and came up here it flattened out well when your bed is up it's steeper but as the truck flattened out so did the bed so there's not as much lift to encourage that material to keep sliding out of the bed that's not good because then it just stops coming out and you don't get as smooth of a spread. And because I have to turn that PTO off, I can't raise the bed up as I go along like I am able to do with Wilbur. And Wilbur's our older truck, but he is a road bond spreading machine. He is awesome. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna kick that little high spot down with my foot. I'm gonna back up to here where our taper started or our road bond started to taper off. I'm gonna raise that bed up and same process again. I'm gonna raise up till I hear material hit the bed. I'm gonna raise it a little bit extra and then we're gonna pop the tailgate and floorboard it and y'all are gonna be able to see that it just takes up where we left off. I could have went ahead and raised the bed up some more down here, but since this truck has such a light engine, there's a good chance that when we pop that tailgate, the front end's coming off the ground. And just two weeks ago, one of my buddies actually stood his single axle up all the way and it sat back on the bed. And they had to take an excavator and unload the material out of it for it to come back down. That's not a situation I want to be in. So let's do this the easy way. Okay, for this to work correctly and the most easy, what we've got to do is clean all that see how hard this is packed in here i'm actually having to work pretty pretty good to get that material out and at this point this is what stinks about it not all coming out one time there's material pressed against this tailgate so what i have to do is get this material that's packed up now out of here because if i just try to raise the bed with this stuff as damp as it is it's going to not come out right because it's lost momentum and it's not going to come out. That stuff's a little damp. This is probably from the top of the pile. Make their life's just a little tougher. Now when you do this, make sure it's a tailgate that you know you can man the handle. You know, you just grab this very bottom lip and pull it. And then slam it. Just like that. You don't want to just grab that thing and hope you can hold on to it. Because that sucker will mash your fingers. It hurts like hell if you get to keep your fingers that is so i'm making sure that the tailgate is all the way against the back 
And there's no rocks in here in these latches. Because if there is, it'll crush that rock. But when you relatch it, it could bend something. And then your tailgate's not going to seal. This tailgate actually seals so good when it rains at any rate, the bed will fill up with water. Even if it's leaning backwards, it'll, dri it'll dribble out. But this thing is almost watertight. That's how good AA builds their beds. You guys ever watched a drag race? Like the big top fuel cars? The reason that they, when they're staging at the lights, you hear their engines rev up really loud, it's not necessarily get their engines revved up. They have turbochargers or superchargers, just like this truck. This truck, there's a turbo lag. So from the time you hit the fuel till the time you've got power, with well, this truck's actually about a second to a second and a half. If before that time you take off and pop the tailgate, it doesn't have enough power to push through that, that surge of the weight of this material coming out. So for you guys who are getting automatic trucks like this with a small engine, I am finding that that's a great way to start. You hold your foot on the brake, put it down in first gear, rev him up until you feel it starting to wanting to pull, but I mean pull hard. That's when you know you got power. As soon as you let off, it can just hold the fuel down steady and you want to go not by pressing the fuel more, but by just letting off the brake. And as soon as you let off the brake, open that tailgate and floor it and you'll have a pretty decent spread i think let's see what we got here let's just check this out okay so we got this good and coated we don't have to worry about it raining and making this way more muddy so we're good here to this point now all we got to do is go get more and more road bond bring it in and build our way into the pad that way we're not bringing mud out we're bringing road bond in let's do it let me just tell you guys that Ford got something very, very right on these trucks, and that is the positive traction rear end. It's actually not a positive traction rear end. It is a air locker. You hold that button down for two seconds, and this sucker is locked up. It won't turn. Hell, you can turn the tires, and it'll just keep pushing you straight. But with this hill getting more and more slippery as the day goes by i mean look at that anybody's right down a road like this you know this sucker's starting to get slick and i'm not spinning a tire at all if it was spinning you'd be hearing the suspension trying to adjust itself it'd be going psh, psh, psh. but it is solid absolutely solid love this feature about this truck and to turn it off you don't have to stop or anything you just hold it down you might have heard that little air release. That was the locker turning loose in the rear end. When that little symbol goes away, you know you're freed up, you're back to limited slip, and you're ready to roll. I'm telling you, this road is just junk. That is red clay. And when that stuff gets wet, it almost just gets slimy. We're not in positive, you know, we haven't got the lockers in right now. It's just pulling right out. That's the one good thing about the small light engine. It does not put a whole, whole lot of pressure on that front end. So it's easier for the rear end to push the truck along. All right, so friends, it is really starting to rain a little bit better now. You can see pedaling on the road, so that means there's gonna be pedaling everywhere else. So. To help make our decisions, I'm going to pull over right here so we can do this safely. Turn our four ways on. And now the lights on the dash are not really blinking. I don't know why it does that. Okay. So let's see. We're going to go to our weather bug app. Now you can see what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my radar because that's what I want to look at. I don't want to look at what they're telling me. And what I'm going to do is I'm the little blue dot. Uh, I know that's hard to say. Let me try a different view. Okay. That might be better. Okay. So where's the blue dot right now? 
Now what's important to me is the colors. See, the blues and the purples, that is extremely light rain. The green is when it's starting to get heavier. Now I'm gonna hit the play and watch the actual movement of this system. See how it's just kinda, of spots are disappearing and appearing. That tells me, and this is over a, let's see. What time, I know you guys can't see that, it's not focusing too good. It's over an hour period, I think. So, anyway. Now you can see right there, that spot's getting close to us. By the time I get up to the quarry, which is up here at my thumb, and back, that spot will have moved on. And potentially the sun will have come out and dried things up, so. Yuck. I'm gonna make the decision just to drive on. And let's just drive on, get back up to the quarry and we'll go ahead and load. I think we can bring another load back without getting stuck. And at that point, we'll look at the radar again. See, the sky looks pretty light, even though it's raining pretty hard. So let's just go for broke, get another load, and just see how it goes. If nothing else, you guys will get to see old Todd get stuck. That's always fun. And I'm not really worried about that either because I've got a 20,000 pound excavator that says he can get me out. It's me again, Lucille, in a matter of just like 20 seconds and a couple hundred yards, look how much brighter the sky is. I'm just wanting to impress upon you when you look at the radar and there's a whole bunch of little splotches, it is gonna be hit and miss showers. It can be heavy rain, it can be clear skies, it can be anything. So unless you just see a huge front and it's moving and moving at a slow rate there's a good chance you can haul material around it you know we'll get to the quarry but if that pile on the outside of the pile we see a lot of just loose rock we'll know that the fines in the crushing run has gotten washed down and it's not going to be a good mixture anymore and at that time we just say you know today's just not going to work let's try it again later on or even tomorrow there's no point in stressing and fighting with material that's not a good mixture. All right, guys, it's just like I predicted. Check this out. Dry roads, bone dry. It was absolutely pouring on us. Like, I don't even know why. Five minutes ago. So this just reaffirms what I'm telling you guys. Don't give up on your day too quickly. Okay, do not give up on it too quickly. There's a lot you can do, and if it was still raining, I'm thinking, what can I do if it's raining, okay? They haven't picked the trencher up yet, okay? So, that's probably like 40, 50 bucks that it's gonna cost me because I didn't have time to take it back to the rental place myself. If at some point today it just rains too much, for me to get anything done and they still haven't picked my trencher up i'm gonna call them up i'm gonna say don't worry about coming to get the trencher i'll bring it back to you myself and we'll save some money even if we can't you know do anything actively to make money we can save well better go ahead and eat my lunch it is pretty well dry here at the quarry almost bone dry must not rain here. Let's go ahead and grab us another load and run back down there. Hopefully that rain will have moved around for us. Oh gosh, it's getting dry. Get this butt around there. Good and dry road on. That's what we like. About eight, eight and a half tons. Hey, get up there again before you talk about. I guess that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Yeah, it might be. <laughs> I appreciate you not costing me a few hundred dollars. Of course, it's been my fault. But I forgot my tarp. I guess y'all probably heard that. Like a fool. That's the best lunch I ever was. 
Damp down here. Say, so, those limbs weren't hanging down. I could back around down through there. But I think what I'm gonna do is just back on. Yeah, you can see this stuff's just sushi. No good. So I'm just going back down here and dump another pile right in front of this one. You see, there's just a little bit of puddling and where the tractor tracks are but this is a prime example why i don't like to leave a job site without at least back dragging the blaze to minimize the amount of puddling and that makes these projects just dry up way faster way 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 faster since it's getting kind of wet i'll take those chains down we've done good today we've kept our eyes to the skies we've watched the weather on our phones as you can see it did get a little bit muddy at times but for the most part just hit and miss showers it's a little bit after three o'clock so we've gotten a good day of work in and we didn't give up we pushed right on through the rain showers danced around us and despite it being overcast between showers it's dried up pretty nicely so we're going back in here with this last load and see how saturated this material is we may be able to spread and work it just a little bit i'm gonna try to get you guys out and go through everything i'm experiencing as we go I think it makes for more effective learning. I got these tree limbs that are kind of low. I can probably just reach up there with my loader and snap them off so I can back the truck around through here. Be a tight fit, wouldn't it? Let's just see what we've got to contend with down here. It's pretty soft. This is a gravel road though. See, I've got this puddling, and right through here is where that water line goes. Oof. Awfully wet. Awfully, awfully wet. Hmm. And one thing I try to discourage is when you've got mud and a lot of water, it's tempting to just grab the road bond and pile it on top of it. But that road bond keeps water out, but it'll also keep water in and make it take even longer to dry out. So, uh, hmm, this stuff just looks slick, doesn't it? We definitely don't want to put the truck on it. That's, that's for sure. That would be a very, very bad decision. We're kind of at a point now that's, it really needs to just dry out real good before we try to finish this. I wish it was dry enough for me to get that tiny house placed but it's going to take both the excavator and the tractor. So I can't pull them off of the job. So we didn't get rained out, but the weather's definitely slowing up, moving on to the next project. But we don't want to rush it. That's, that, again, is the last thing you want to do. There's just really... Not a lot I can figure on doing here. Let's uh, flip the tractor around. Try to knock those 
top limbs down, I guess. That's probably going to be our best turning point. Okay, so since the material earlier that was in the truck was drier, what I'm going to do is set my chains at 14 lengths again, but since it's wetter, it's either A, gonna clog up the tailgate and not work at all, or two, it's gonna come out a little bit slower and be a little bit smoother of a spread. So, kind of a gamble. Let's give it a try. Truck drivers, number one rule, get out and look as many times as you need to. Because on this side of the truck is just a drop off, about two to three feet, plenty enough to flip the truck if we go off it. On this side, we've got the tree. So as I was backing slowly along it, I wasn't as much watching the tree because I know I can get past it. The question is, is the road smooth? Because if it's not, and I've got the bed way up in the air. When I go around that tree, if it gets to rocking, it could slam that bed over into the tree, which is bad. So, I'm feeling good about this. I think, I think we'll be able to get around through there just fine. I'm gonna back on up just a little bit, and they'll wanna raise that bed up and make a go of it. Y'all keep your fingers crossed, because if this stuff packs up in this tailgate, that's a lot of weight going around a little bit of a curve. Do you think we should open it up to 15 lengths? I'm going to check the material, the, the amount of moisture in it one more time and then we'll make a decision. Let's check our material. Oh, pretty clumpy. But there's a lot of rock and not too, too many fines. It's a real gamble. It's a hard decision. We can play it safe, open it up an extra length to where we're more likely that it's not going to clump up. In that scenario, worst thing that can happen is it's going to come out really thick onto the ground and we'll have to use the box blade to pull material either way once we get dry weather. If we stay at 14 and it clumps up, which is pretty likely, it, I, won't, I won't lie, it's pretty likely. In that case, we'll have to let the bed down and we're going to have to take a shovel reach up in there and work the stuff out or I have to work harder you know that's that's the gist of it but if it works and it's a nice smooth spread we will have saved a lot of time so what do you guys think we should do should we chance it or not it has been in my experience guys when you get that feeling this is a bad idea it's usually right so let's just go ahead and open up to 15 lengths. Just dump it out. How it comes out is how it comes out. And then we can put the box blade on and work this stuff out. I think that's the right decision here. We're going to go to 15 lengths this time. You guys will notice I change my mind a lot because factors change a lot. Information coming in to the driver, who is me right now and will someday be you, it changes constantly. Especially when the weather is changing constantly. Let's double check. One, two, three, four. Another thing is, too, 
if it clumps up and I can't tell it's clumped up and that material's not sliding out, that means it's staying up toward the front of the bed. So any wobble is gonna be exaggerated. It's gonna be a lot more of a wobble. So let's just raise the bed up no more than we have to. Pop the tailgate and give it to it. Home run, hole in one. Wasn't the perfect spread. No doubt about that. But I slowly went around this curve. You can see right here at the edge of this dirt where I filed it off. That's pretty good drop off and over here. But it tied in quite nicely. We may even still have some in the bed. But that was my main goal, was to tie it in. Now, I can take the box blade, pull that around, get a little bit tighter here, and then we can start working material that way. So I'm pleased. That was definitely not my best spread. That's a given. But for me, conditions, home run. Home run. Thank goodness we didn't turn over. We still got a little material. See how wet that is over there? How it held on? So let's back the truck up, shake out what we've got extra. And maybe we've got time to go ahead and put the box blade on and push a little material around. We'll see. Step number one, I'm going to back blade with the box blade, smooth this little hump out. That way I don't just back up, grab a bunch of material and then try to drive across uneven ground, which is just going to transfer the bump from one spot to another. So let's grab some material and pull that corner out. We've gotten the battle started and it will be won. So if you're wondering how do you continue this, you back the tires up along the smooth part of the road that you've gotten smoothed out. Y'all are kind of leaning one way. Let me fix it here. All right. So you back your tractor up if you're using a tractor. And you back up where the smooth stops and the bolt material is sitting. Your box blade's sticking back this far. So the easiest way I found to do this with a box blade is you back up to the pile until you hit uneven. Drop your box blade down with the float control all the way to the top. That way it's not bearing down too hard. And about every three feet at a time, you grab some material, you pull it. Grab some material, you pull it. Once you got all the material this way that you need, Put your float control down to where your box blade will stay even. And then you go into low gear and slowly just start pushing that material around to where you need it. Box blades are great. They're not the best for grading out roads. I like using one. I'm used to it. Obviously a motor grader or a bulldozer is going to be well, stronger. It's more efficient and faster. But for the cost, I love my track. Absolutely love it. So, like you guys check this out right here. You can see that we're thin here. There's just bare ground. So what I'm gonna need to do is come back to about this point and pull some material over top of it. I'll show you guys how I do that now. Hopefully you guys will be able to see this pretty good.
Let me show you guys how this is working. Have you got me? Are you with me? All right. This is a box plate. It's got sides on it, sides on it, two of them, and a back with a blade that cuts. It's also got a blade on this back side. This same curved blade. It's got one in here. You can see it. And what it is, is this box blade collects and holds material in the box. And you control your heights. And you can see here how it's a little bit higher on the side than that edge. It allows material to drop out and under. So as you lift and lower that box blade, you're either gathering material or depositing it. It's really pretty simple. It just takes some practice, practice. See, now it's just that simple, guys. Now, this side's been lifted up by smoothing that material out, and we've got a lower spot here. Let me just show you. There's about that much of a drop. So I'm gonna back my tractor up to where there's no drop. And once I start to feel the tractor lean, I know that I'm going into that uneven path. I'm gonna put my box blade down. I'm gonna angle it back to where it's not digging into the ground, but it's just smoothing the ground. And it's gonna take about three to four passes to get this smooth. You guys will see. So you see guys, grading is not that hard, especially ABC and gravel, because it's loose. You know, you're not gonna cut chunks out most of the time. So now that we got in the forward part of this little bit of road, graded out with the box blade. Now we've got this big pile of excess material. And you think, how in the world am I gonna work this? One foot at a time, okay? What I'm going to do, and this is the very most basic information I can give you on this. I'm going to use the rear cutting edge just like a knife. And I'm going to cut this down little by little, one pass at a time. And the reason I say to do it little by little, at first, when you start to dig in, if you dig in deep into a pile, the weight of the material is going to make the blade want to dig deeper. And you're not gonna be ready for that and you're not gonna know how much to lift up on the box blade when you start feeling that weight. So while you're learning, cut small amounts of material. Do little by little. And you will learn how, when you cut more and more material, how it reacts to what you're doing. So I'm gonna leave you guys focused in on right here and just pay attention to how the box blade shears this off and at the same time, moves the material further up where we want it to be. It hasn't rained in a little bit, so this area up here we're working is not just soaking wet. There's actually a little bit of gravel, so it's fairly firm. It's just got a lot of mud on top. So let's cut this down little by little, and I'm gonna go in a slow gear so you guys can see how it works. It's super easy, and using a tractor to get in to fixing roads is the best way to get into grading and excavation. I'm telling you, there's decent little bits of money in it. Your startup costs aren't that bad and it doesn't take a huge truck to haul a small track. I've got this box blade tilted way down, okay? And that pitches the cutting edge upward and that way it's not digging in nearly as aggressively. The other thing is on the tractor, your draft control has got to be down. So it locks your lift cylinders. So as you push into this, the box blade can't go up. The tractor holds it down and holds it in place and you're gonna shave this off. It's almost like if you took a bowl of Cheerios and it's mounded up and you took a butter knife that was perfectly straight and you laid it on the top of the bowl and raked all the excess Cheerios off. 
is going to be perfectly level. So let's move some Cheerios. Did you guys see that? That is satisfying. And imagine once you learn to do this and you can do it at a high rate of speed and you can be efficient just think about how satisfying it is to dump a load of road bond out in a pile and you just cut it out look at this perfectly smooth you got your mound there that we didn't touch now we're gonna cut this on down and we're gonna cut down a little bit more at a time until we're at the grade we want then we're gonna start moving over about that much at a time and we're gonna start cutting into that and we're just gonna swing around, swing around and just keep cutting it. I'll do this as a time lapse and you'll be able to see it develop before your eyes. Check this out guys. Super easy, quick grading with a box blade. So now, we start out with a pretty good pile. We tailgated it halfway decent for conditions. But with teaching you guys, we bent this for a few minutes. So now, in real time, I'm gonna show you how I take out all the little imperfections. I'm gonna start out with box blade tilted as far back as I can, and I'm gonna move real quickly. And any really little imperfections and high spots, it's gonna grab them really quick. And with each pass, I'm going to tilt the bucket more forward so it catches smaller and smaller imperfections and gets this really good and smooth. So I'm going to do this in real time so you guys can see, you know, the rate that you can work one of these things once you get halfway decent at it. I'm by far not the best, but I'm working on it. Let's drag this box blade. friends is exactly how I do almost every driveway when we bring in fresh road bond. I actually had to do less passes than I thought. Um, as I was pulling it out, what I do is I try to do a straight line pull. I first pulled out the worst parts and then I came back and I pulled straight out to there twice you saw and any imperfections and then I reset to where I could back up, grab the high spots pull them out and then it created this nice smooth, smooth if i can get it out get my words out this nice smooth section of driveway i think it turned out really nice i'm happy with it the only way it could be better is if i had a roller here that's not in the budget but it being a pretty flat driveway it's going to settle in just fine with regular driving i hate to say it but i've got to call that for the day i've got a dinner to get to but if you guys want to subscribe and ding the bell give me a like and drop me a comment whether you like this or not it helps me get better when you guys tell me what you like and don't like but as i was saying if you like this little bit of a segment we've got more driveway to fix and we've got a couple more piles of road bond fix and i'm going to go over a couple more techniques using the box blade including the excavator 
it's gonna be a lot of fun so you guys tune in next time we're gonna go over how to build some roads you guys have a great day i know i did